my buddy from San Antonio. He does a lot of interesting transactions, dirty deeds. Um, lawsuits, the hard, dirty stuff. Um, one of the more interesting guys in our space, one of the more knowledgeable guys in our space. So I'm looking forward to it. We've been chatting off camera for a little while now. We're already really far into some stuff, talking yeah. about fire selling properties. <laughs> and uh, if you're not, not too smart for that, but no. <laughs> dude, if, if you're not fire selling properties right now, you're lying. Or you're not smart. Right here. Or you're not smart. Yeah. So so everybody I see that's just like, oh, it's still business as usual. <clears throat> Do you think they're telling the truth? No. They even haven't they haven't realized how bad of a position they're in yet, or they're trying to sell you something and they're lying. Those are only two options. That's what I think. I I, I feel the exact same way. I'm in all different spaces. Um, we're in commercial, mobile home parks, multifamily, single family homes, land. Yeah, we got our hands in almost all of it, um, and all of it is is very, very, very difficult right now. Um, you were telling uh, before we got on camera, you were saying how many deals you've sold at a couple of grand margin or small margin yeah. this year versus your entire career. So I've, I've, it's about ten years I've been in real estate, and I'd say on one hand I could count the deals that we sold at a negative margin or break even, literally less than half a dozen. And in the last 60 days, I bet we've sold between a dozen and a little, maybe a little bit more than that at either break even or slight loss. When I was, what I was telling you is we shot our shot. We thought we bought it cheap enough. We thought there was margin there. We thought it'd sell quick enough, and it didn't. The moment we realized the market was not accepting what we were trying, we lowered the price as quickly as we could, as low as we could to sell it and break even and get it out of there. Because I truly believe next month it's worth less. Next month it's worth, worth less. And the following, it's worse and worse because interest rates continue to climb. Yep. So our goal is, it ain't worth anything above what we paid. Get out of it quick, because gonna, we're going to lose money if we don't. And so now you got all that dry powder <clears throat> ready to deploy if yeah. something if something big comes up or something you you know. So the funny thing is now over the last couple of years I've been using debt yep. as our business developed. We have more consistent cash flow. I feel more comfortable that I'm in a position where I'm not going to have a problem making a payment. Yeah. And I'm, I think we're better at real estate. Yeah. So now I've been using debt. So now I'll say, here's the amount of dry powder I got. The neat thing is it can go four times further than the, its value in cash because debt, 25% down. Yeah. Well, I don't, you know, the way that <clears throat> debt works right now, it, it's it's tricky business. Um, here's, here's, I went, I wish I could show my phone. I went into Audible and found all the historic, every bit of the historical books that I could read um, of what people were saying before the last crash, right? Oh. So I was reading all kinds of weird books about the stock market, um, developing. I uh, read a, a book about real estate developing that was written before the last crash. Um, whole bunch of stuff just to see what, you know, what were the sunshine pumpers saying back then that they got wrong, that, that how did the market school them, and who was right, and what were they saying? You get what I mean? Mm -hmm. And so, anyways, I did all that historical <clears throat> Um, research, and I realized something. In the last crash, it wasn't people that couldn't make payments that caused um, a lot of the pain. It was banks calling notes due because people were in technical default because their net worth had shrank. Oh, yeah, so saying bring more collateral or you can call your debt. Well, it wouldn't bring more collateral. I mean, it was pay us off in full because the bank's balance sheet was in such bad position. Oh, yeah. That they would look at a guy that had a bunch of money in the bank – and say, you give us all your money. And he's like, my properties are performing. Why don't you go after some of these properties that aren't performing? And they got to balance out their balance sheet. We don't need that exposure. Yeah, so and they're like, they're like, like, you just said it. Your properties <clears throat> are performing. You either pay them yep. off or we're going to take them. Yep. You're in technical default. You don't have the net worth that you did before this started. So pay us off. And this was happening to a ton of highly successful people. I had some close friends that were actually exposed to the tune of $40, 50 million dollars and they had a big part of their net worth in some of those portfolios and they were wiped because they couldn't exit quick enough to get the debt paid and their equity back so yep. they were wiped out. But those were got those guys were into Chase, Wells Fargo, the big boys and those guys don't give a shit. So the debt we've been using has been more community style banks mid-size. And from what I continue to ask these guys, hey, we know where this is going. Mm -hmm. I keep asking them, who are you going to want to be lending to? Yep. What kind of assets do you want to have in this upcoming market? And our guys keep reporting to us, 
y'all are the kind of debt that we'd like to have. Because I turn around and say, great, I'm buying these warehouses at 60 to 70 cents on the dollar, and I'm portfolioing them, and I'm putting 25 to 30 percent down that you asked me to, and I'm really happy. These are working great, and our cash flow is great. Debt service coverage is huge. Yep. But I can build this beautiful portfolio, but in four years, if you call my all notes my notes do, due, I'm going to bankrupt, even though I've got a badass portfolio, and I don't want that. That's right. So what I'm having to do is reserve a little extra cash for payments, even though I don't need them. I'm just putting them in CDs so the bank sees it and they say, this guy's very responsible. And I'm staying with the right kind of banks that claim, but mm -hmm. they want this. But ultimately, I do know I've got some exposure. Well, And I'm going to have to go to some wealthy guy and give him 50% of my equity to bail me out if that happens. And I don't really want that, but I also believe it's probably not going to happen. Well, I don't know. I, I don't know <clears> any of that. Um, in the last crash, um, Eddie Gant, owner of Jet Lending, shout out Jet Lending. Hit us up, R2R, roughneck to real estate.com if you need a loan. Anyways, he had, um, he, he was taking houses back at a real uh, big clip. People were signing deeds in lieu. And he said over and over again, I, I don't want to do that. I don't want to do that this time. So we're going to underwrite stricter. If you don't have any cash in the bank, you know, I mean, we're getting tidying, tighter with underwriting. But yeah. the way that a lending company like that works, they use bank credit, they, yep. they, 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 they use credit lines. They have a ton of private money. I mean, it's an insane amount of private money, probably. I don't know. I'm not going to put their business on the street, but <laughs> yeah. they have a, they have an insane amount of private money. They use that, and then they use uh, bank debt, bank notes. But in the last crash, they had a bank call a million dollar line due. They yeah, just yeah. had to pay them off, and you know, of course, at that time they were take. I mean, they took back something. I don't remember what the number was, but they had you know, several hundred rental properties at the end of it. Dude, lenders aren't property managers. They, it drives me nuts. Some people say, that bank's a monster. They want my real estate. They don't want they your don't real want your estate, estate, dude. They don't. So, so there are very few that actually do. Most, no, 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 no. And, and so anyways, they had, the Eddie tells it like this. And I, I need to really get Eddie in here and let him chop it up with us. But <clears throat> he would put a for sale by owner sign in the yard. And a for rent sign in the yard, and whoever walked up first, <laughs> yes, got it. So he was owner financing and renting. So, so taking that lesson from this time when, when interest rates started creeping up, I was like, look, we're in an asset class that we were going to have more pressure than we did before. I know that because yep. we're in the bottom rent. We're in bottom rent. We're not in very expensive rent. We have a little bit, but we're going to have more pressure because as households shrink, right? Yep. yep. Um, you know, I'll move back in with my dad. You move back in with your dad. Um, probably not us. We're probably bad candidates, but you know, yeah. people do move back in together or start roommating. You know yeah. what I mean? At the lower end of the rent spectrum, I believe that's what happens. They consolidate households. They consolidate households. Um, people give it up, but more people need that, that price point rent. So there's going to be more pressure on it. Same thing with people buying a house. We're at a price point. I mean, we very rarely pay more than 150,000 for anything. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, so we're at a price point where it's like there's going to be more pressure on people that want to own versus rent that just have some value system that they can never rent. So they have to own, and this is all they'll be able to afford with their, their DTI and all that. So we, we felt comfortable in that. But here's the one thing I knew was going to happen. All this stuff that we had bought at peak purchase was not going to appraise if we waited to rent it out. Uh we knew the appraisals were going to continue to get worse and worse as people fire sold in the neighborhood. So we knew that we were going to yeah. be start getting up against uh, uh, appraisals. We also knew the banks were going to tighten lending restrictions. So they were going to want you to have more and more money in the deal. Yep. Okay. Yep. So we immediately went with the Eddie Gantt strategy and put um, owner finance and for rent on every <laughs> single listing. Yeah. And people were like, well, how could you owner finance something? I'm like, I don't know. We're going to figure it out. You know what I mean? If the yeah. private money person that's there don't want to ride with us on the owner finance. We'll cross that bridge when we get there. Well, we don't have a buyer yet. Once we have a buyer, we'll figure that one out. So we did that. And um, I, and then the notes, the notes have sold so well. People are like, why are you selling the notes? I'm like, because I got to recapitalize yeah. my private money. But they're still selling. They sell so quickly. It's funny you say that. So we have some real estate, a lot of real estate, actually, that we thought was going to sell easily to the cash market or conventional lending. It didn't. And we realized, like we know, you can sell it for more money on notes. So we, it hasn't been quite as strong now as it was last mm -hmm. year, but it's still a substantial markup from the mobile homes to single family and then also to land tracks under 10 acres. Dude. We've done a fair amount of that. So we converted those to notes instead of selling for cash. I got a piece of land right now. It's a 10-acre track just outside of San Antonio. Someone's buying it on a note for 145000 Okay, It wouldn't sell for hundred grand on MLS. 
So but we the, took it off. A realtor brought us a seller finance deal, and then we're going to sell that note for like 125, 130. No, we're going to still do better that way. You're still going to do better. Now let yeah. me run another idea by you. We just had a <laughs> note buyer bring us a bank that loaned him money to buy a note. Huh. Now, I don't, I don't. now I've heard of people. We've refinanced our notes. Yeah, we, you know we have. That's what I see. Folks buy it all, then they refinance. They refinance it, but I've never seen one let you come to the, go to the marketplace and buy one. So we got a meeting with that bank tomorrow. I'll give you their contact info. That's interesting. So, I know a guy in our town that does that. He uses bank money mm-hmm. to buy, but he's been doing it for thirty years. He's got a forty million dollar portfolio. And this guy's a brand new real estate investor. Huh. Wow, that's interesting. It I was like, this is the most aggressive bank we got. Wow. Yeah. <laughs> they're going they're going to uh, we need to know who they are. Now, most banks aren't taking on new clients. They you know, they they're riding with who their margins are getting squeezed, so they got to loan money. Yeah. But they're riding with who they know um, can perform. So, you know, it's getting tougher and tougher for the newbies. Mm. It's getting harder and harder for the experienced people that um, you know, didn't nurture banking relationships, <clears throat> that didn't nurture relationships the whole time. Um, and for us, it's kind of like we're shifting strategies. We're going to a wholesale strategy where, uh, you know, all of our transactional income that we need to make is no longer flip money, Yeah. you know, no longer flips. Um, we're going to wholesale model and we're just turning our network, our personal network, our friends, families, cousins. I sold wholesale one to my nephews <laughs> or my wife's, my, my, not my wife's, my, uh, my nephew's wife, my niece's oh. husband. Okay. Um, <laughs> and here's the crazy part. So I wholesale this deal. It's a duplex. Like here, you know, put a seven thousand dollars assignment fee on it. Here you go. You're in it at eighty. Yeah. You got a seven ninety credit score. You're probably going to own this forever. But go ahead and list it and try to sell it and see what happens. He lists it for one forty. It's under contract. Oh my gosh. I'm like wow. Right Dang. in December, I'm like, he's like, oh man. I'm like, don't 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 start spending that money. <laughs> like, just hold back. Let Make it, it close. Yeah, yeah. Let it close first. You got to go through some inspections, appraisals, all the things. Um, I've had a lot of folks come to us. For bailouts, we do deal still do a fair amount of pre foreclosure work. I had a guy get referred to me not long ago. He lives in one of the most expensive subdivisions just outside of town. Uh, house he claims is worth eight hundred grand. He just listed for eight hundred grand foreclosures in four days. He owed his bank three hundred, but he was eighty behind to reinstate because he hadn't made a payment since COVID. So I'm like, what okay, <clears throat> Did it, is is he a real estate investor? No, 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 no. Homeowner. He okay, was referred okay, okay. through a realtor, oh, and the realtor okay. saying, "How do I work this out?" Normally, I say, "Look, tell him, give him fifty grand to walk. I'll take over the debt, and then I'll go clean it up and sell it." But now he's getting no money. Well, here's a tricky part, man. He didn't want to leave, and he wanted to take top dollar. So I had to have a, a come to Jesus conversation with him and say, yeah. Let, "Let's get realistic here. No one's buying this from you for top dollar. You get on the market for eight twenty five. It ain't moving. You got four days of foreclosure. So here's what he came up with." I invested eighty grand to reinstate his note. Mm-hmm. I took a second position to his three hundred. Okay. So all in, his total debt now is eighty thousand. So I'm thinking, or I'm sorry, three hundred eighty thousand. It's listed at eight hundred. I'm thinking, even if it sells for six hundred, we can slash the price and we'll all get our money. Yeah. <clears throat> so I told the realtor that brought us, I said, "You're, I'm not going to charge usury rates. I can't do that. Don't want to get in trouble. But you're providing a unique service. So your listing fee is not three percent. It's twelve percent." Well, and, it, and he it, goes, can I do that? I said, yes, yeah. absolutely yeah, yeah. you can. So now everybody's showing that house. Right. So we we got it canceled with the other agent, listed it with this guy that referred it to me. I'm only charging, I don't know, 10% interest, four points, whatever. I ain't going right. to make a ton on that. But the realtor is probably going to owe me some money when this is done because I figured I had to get him a 12% listing fee. Yep. Now, what's crazy is I said, you're at 825 on the listing. When I take when my guy takes it over, you're going to go at uh, 790 But – you have to lower the price twenty five thousand every week until it sells. So we made him sign the listing agreement because I didn't think it was worth it eight hundred thousand. I didn't even know it was going to sell for seven, but I didn't want him to get himself in a spot where he held out mm-hmm. and then he held out my second note. Yep. So he's contractually obligated to lower that price. So we've been doing this now. Our price is at uh, right around six hundred thousand, and we're starting to get looks and offers in the fives. That's good. That and, and everybody's going to win. Be disciplined. He's going to be unhappy because he doesn't walk away with the quarter million he thought he was going to walk away with, but he's going to walk away with 50 to 80 grand. I get my money. I make a little with the realtor, and we get rid of this bad situation. He, but he's <clears> – people like that are weird because he could have sold it in 21 Dude. and made a killing. Oh, my gosh. Like, wh- what did you do, my guy? He he would have made a couple hundred grand at least if he had sold it then. But 
So, so those are the things we're having to deal with at this point. Because I say I'm not willing to invest in this because I don't know where the bottom really is. But I'll take a second position because if, if that house out there in the Dominion, super fancy area, if you default, we can't get it sold. You're going to walk away and give it to me, and I'm just going to stick a tenant in there and sit on this thing for five years and make a little yield on my eighty grand. Well, yeah, we got chat. We got Andrew Hosell. <clears throat> Hey team, greetings from North Colorado, Fort Collins. Andrew, Andrew's got some uh, low interest money out there in today's market. If you're below 150, so hit him up. Um, that that is real talk. He does have um, today's low low interest money. So, Andrew, are your lenders rare, uh, merely riding with tighter guidelines, or they call in any of a market deteriorating market on a rate sheet? Now, I don't see a rate sheet. I'm never. They, it's kind of with us. Um, oh, man. We had we had five banks that would do mobile homes. We have one that will do mobile homes now. Ah, so just cleaning up there. This is all we're gonna. Yeah, do. Yeah, this is all we're gonna do. And then on that, um, they change the lending guidelines to basically they look at the year model mobile home, and so they if, want newer. No, they don't want newer, but they up like they just put it on a DSCR. Mm -hmm. So they, they put it on whatever DSCR they put it on, which isn't real life because they don't they yeah. take they take taxes and insurance as the only two expenses, and then they put it at a one two five or one two DSCR, mm -hmm. and they back in their amortization. Huh. So we got one that's amortized for eight years. <laughs> okay. It's like all right. So, take it. So so they'll they'll still loan on them, but yeah. That you're gonna, you're they're not going to cash flow. <laughs> like, you, you know, know, what are we getting on our credit lines? They're up to six and a half percent now. They were down in the high threes, low fours, up to okay. six and a half is the last increase. And I just get a letter, they're variable. We all signed on that. I yeah. just get a letter that says your credit line is now six and a half, now six and three quarters. So we have that on the permanent debt. I think uh, permanent debt's in the sixes right now, or not say permanent, but most of those commercial loans are five to seven year balloon yeah. amortized at 20 years. And they're in the sixes, I think approaching sevens now. If you're getting sixes know. on that, you're doing amazing. I asked Grant on his um, on his little Twitter space the other day. I was like, what's the big boy debt? So I was in Grant's real estate class. Yeah. yeah. He went to life insurance and, and financed, um, got 1.6. Oh, my gosh. So I asked him, what's, what's the big boy debt now? And he's like, the big boy <clears> debt, <throat> if you can get it at five and a half, it's amazing. That's, I mean, great triple A, like the best yeah. guys that are out there. The best guys that are out there, five and a half is the best they can do. Mm. And he got a one six when, you know what I mean? So it's like, I mean, That's it's a whole different category. It is a different category, but great they, A assets, great A rated person, probably lots of liquidity sitting around to be safe. Different rated person. But here's, here's one point he did bring up, and I know you saw it. I, I know I saw it. So, um, suppressing cap rates, um, they just got crunched. I mean, we were we were in an asset class that was, if you got an eight, you felt like you won. You know what yeah. I mean? That went to six. Okay, it got into the fives. I mean, we we did a refi in Hillsboro, Texas, and got a five cap oh, wow. on the appraisal. Now we were completely under leveraged, anyways. But I was like, how do you get a five in a town that doesn't have seven thousand people? You get what I mean? Like, this is not... Yeah, it doesn't make sense. This isn't a normal lending environment or, or normal deal. Anyways, so as those cap rates expand back out to eight, you, I mean, you can put it on a sliding scale. See how much extra cash flow you will need to get the same value you had at a five at an eight cap. You're going to need to increase that NOI significantly, um, and you probably can't. So there's a ton of these value-add guys that went in in this hot market competing with everybody under the sun, and they're in that, say, 100 100 to 300, not, I don't 300 might be too big, but the smaller, like we're very small multifamily, 10, 20, 30 units. Big, yeah. Biggest one we've done is 47 units or something. That's area we play in. Yeah, yeah. that's area small, we play in. Small stuff. But we're not competing with a bunch of people. So that's one of the neat reasons. That is the main reason. But when it gets into that 100, 150 unit range, it seems like everybody has a little bit of a fund or something that they they can go buy that with. Because it's more economical Scale-wise, that's part of why once we started getting that 40, 50-unit range, we started to find the industrial mm -hmm. is interesting because the funds, 
there's a space in the industrial where it's probably it's less than twenty or thirty thousand square foot of building. Yep. The funds won't touch that. They're looking for that big concrete tilt wall shit they can deploy, you know, ten million dollars at a time. Yep. So I'm like less than three million, less than thirty thousand square foot for me. Ain't nobody looking there. Only people in that space are mom and pops operators. And they don't know what a cap rate is. And the cool part, this is the, <laughs> oh my gosh, this is a, a beautiful place I found yep. myself in. Old man built this building 20, 25 years ago. It's metal, so it's still in perfect shape. Been running his business, granite business, equipment business, landscape business, whatever the heck out of it. And now it's time for him to wind the business down and he just put a tenant in there or he's closing up shop and yep. there's nobody in it yet. He built that thing for five or six hundred grand back then. Basis. So he's going to sell it to me for one point two. He's so happy. He's doubling his money. Yep. I'm going to make it easy on him. And where the gold is, is it's actually worth two to three. That's right. And, and I'm paying him good money for him, and I got plenty of cream on the top. And, and, and there's no funds competing for that deal, so I'm not over here having to squeeze cap rates. I'm killing that. We we do that same thing in multifamily, except the the seller that we have wants to sell it for basis. So he calls a CPA to give him the price on principle alone. He's like, on principle alone, I don't want to pay these taxes. Oh, my God. I'm 85 years old. I've been doing it without paying them this long. I ain't paying none now. And so that's the deal that we run into. Wow. The 150 units that everybody's competing for, they went in and they, they, they had a compressed cap rate. It's yeah. value add. Okay, but probably had a ton of deferred maintenance. Nobody ever talks about the deferred maintenance and value add. That shit is expensive. <laughs> it's expensive. So they probably had a ton of deferred maintenance, and they probably didn't notice it all anyways, didn't actually know the whole story. So they get in there, and they've got a rehab budget. they got a rehab plan that's going to be value add. They're going to you know, change out the pool chairs and make it more trendy, paint the walls gray. Yeah. You know what I mean? They're going to make it yeah. just cute as a button, and bump rents, $250. Well... They're on a variable interest loan with a bridge loan on top of it. As soon as they it. bump rents 250 bucks, their interest rate went up and they're still flat. And there's, well, <laughs> the interest rate went up and cap rates went backwards. Oh, okay. So they're negative equity. Oh. And on top of that, on top of that, they gave a preferred return to their investors because that's the only way they could get any hands on any money back then. So I talked to somebody the other day that said they're calling all their investors and saying, we're deferring the preferred payments now and you're, you're, you're a priority when we exit to get those paid first, but they're deferring those distributions you, right now. If y'all don't understand that, what he's saying is the preferred return of 8%, they can no longer pay because they're these these first bridge loan, um, um, rehab loan, whatever you want to call them on these yeah. apartment complexes, There's a ton of there was a ton of debt available for it. But it would be, you've got a, a year of runway. Yep. And, and you got to pay that interest every month so your investor's happy. And, and then and then you've got the preferred return that you're paying your investors. Now, maybe you <clears> haven't had to pay out that preferred return until it's stabilized. Maybe there's some trigger like that, like the preferred return kicks in once it's stabilized. Yeah, They, they can put all that stuff in there. But this rate over here was going to follow uh, prime plus two or whatever it was. And in a year, it's going to readjust to prime plus two. And what is prime plus two today? <sighs> and so their main debt, their first lien debt, um, balloons and at the same time the preferred equity hits and their rent raises they probably did see an increase in demand and rent raises but multifamily properties i don't care what anybody says right now right now these class b multifamilies are going to be hard hit hard pressed to be able to raise rents they're not going to raise at the same rent as a single family home simply not as households shrink people have more options to live in a house yeah. versus an apartment and people are going to pick a house over an apartment if they have a family. And that's just simple, simple education tells me if I can live in a class A property or a class B property or a house for the same money, class B is going to be last on the list. And that's it. Yeah. So they're not going to get the rent raises that everybody else is going to get. And they're up against a softening cap rate. All of this is the perfect storm of these people going default. Yeah. And and what you said, the the investors that brought the equity. The tricky part is I think the equity that came in, that stuff starts to get stressed where the banks in that first position. They don't if care. If the bank causes them to sell, those all those equity investors are probably going to be the ones that are going to lose they're because gonna get wiped. they're yeah. going to get wiped. But cuz the next round of guys won't they're not waiting for it to go to mega cheap, but they're looking to get enough for it to make sense. And that's the equity piece that gets vanished. It does get vanished. And then the bank, on top of that, the bank, um, 
you know, if you if you did get it stabilized, if you did get your value add done, if you did get tenants in there and get it at 100% occupied or 90% occupied or whatever it was, yeah. to be able to go for the permanent debt, now the permanent debt's rates increased as well. And yep. you're up against an appraisal that's not going to appraise the same. So maybe you have to have a capital call to even be able to get to get the, that to work. To, to get so the now what happens? So we say, all right, these things are kind of starting to get stressed today. And folks are saying, that's cheap. That's a good deal. My response lately has been, that's cheap, but that ain't next summer cheap. That ain't next summer and cheap. And m- no one wants to make these long forecasts. You know, They say, oh, this is going to last this long, that long. I hear people say, this is going to last until the end of next year. I think they're doing that because it's for sure not going to be over in January. It might take five or ten years, but no one wants to forecast that long. So I feel like they want to push it into a time that – Maybe possibly could make sense, but no one still knows. So you say, into next year. Well, but, but think about what happens. Even if it was over, to, well, there hasn't been enough pain in the marketplace now. Yeah, but once got, it, I, think, I feel like we have a long way to go. Once, once, once there becomes pain in the marketplace, it could end like a, a massive amount of pain in the marketplace. A ton of people get wiped out. It could end the next day. And by it, I mean <clears> interest rates could go back down to three. But people aren't going to come rushing their money back in. Why? They just got spanked. Real estate's a scam. It, you know what I mean? You can't it takes win a in while it. to it takes a while. The neat thing is humans' memory is very short, but it ain't a day or two short. It's a couple of years. It's short. a couple of short years short. So there's still going to be that that lag where everybody that gets their bottom spanked is going to is is going to hang out on the sidelines for a lot longer. And then you know it takes that, a while, and it takes a while for money to start circulating again, for confidence to start to happen, mm-hmm. and then you get into that spot when the market goes upwards, where it's each new person's willing to pay one dollar more to get the next deal. That's when this starts to happen again. Uh, yeah, the economic the next, engine fires up. The next fool. Yeah, yeah we we did the you yeah, know yeah. Be, I, now I'm not I'm not I'm just a realist. So here's what I do know. Yeah, I do know I can install a mobile home for ninety ninety five thousand everything right now in today's marketplace and i do know that i can turn around and try to sell it for 150 if it doesn't sell for 150 i know i can rent it for 1500 dollars a month because i got five of them rented for 1500 dollars a month in the same neighborhood and they rent like that so if i can do that all cash so if i can take all the private money that we've acquired over the years of doing this and and exchange it to equity and say hey look i'm now going to give you 90 percent equity and we're going to flip houses, and we're going to rent houses, and we're going to own or finance houses, and we're going to sell notes. We might even go buy some notes, and we're going to go buy some other distressed assets. We might take some stuff subject to. We're going to do a, a, a basically a blind fund for X number of dollars. Yeah. We're going to give up 90% of it. We can give 90% of it to the investors, and we're going to turn our business into that to where it's just wow. to where it's just we're going to roll that money the same way, but we don't have debt. It's all yeah. It's a different way, and and so we're going to do that. But then, what do we get to do? We get to go install mobile homes. We get to install septics. We how get long to, can you lock those folks in, or how uh, long are they going to be locked in? Five years, with an option to extend. But it's such a small amount. I mean, five million dollars just ain't a lot of money. Um, but it's such a small amount to where if somebody came in and said, "Man, I'm you know I need my money back," we could replace it. Um, and we're still going to have part of our private capital. For our own flipping operation, yeah. Um, but we're just going to take our skill set that we've built and put it to work, and and put it to work for the investors, and give up. I mean, we're not we're not doing it to make fees. We're not doing it for the ten percent. We're doing it for our investors that have rode with us, so they can make most of the money on this deal. And so our guys, DJ and them, and all of our guys that we got can stay working. So yeah. they don't have to look up and go, when are we going to get laid off? We're not going to get laid off. <clears throat> we're we're going to continue to install mobile homes. We're going to int- continue to flip properties. We're going to continue to do what we do in our little niche that is small. Everybody always, it's small. It's too rural. It's too this. It's too that. Yeah. We're going to continue to do that until the market turns back around. And then when the market turns back around, whatever that fund's holding, you know what I mean, will be worth double or get whatever it is. And then we'll then we'll liquidate it. And, uh, and then we'll try- ask them again, hey. Do you want to go do something bigger now? You know, do you want to? You know, that's a an interesting point. You're, it's not you're not talking about growing and trying to explode and kill it, and double your business. What I'm basically hearing you say is we want to maintain. Well, we we we're going to grow. I mean, we we grow naturally, but like I don't we don't have a revenue problem, right? So it's like it's like if we stop tomorrow, if we just said, look, we're going to shut this thing down, our property management company would be fine, our rentals yeah. would be fine. Everything would be fine, but there would be several people, several contractors, several other people that wouldn't be fine. You know what I mean? Yeah. And so it's like, um, 
you know, what, what do you do to maintain that? Like, how do you do it? So we went to all of our private money people and they're ready. We think now is the time to buy. We do believe that now is the time to buy. You market every day. You talk to your guys. How yeah. often do you talk to your wholesaling company? Um, I mean, the guy who's running, I talk to him daily. Well, and, and how is the temperature changing or how does he say the temperature is changing for sellers? People that are actually starting to wake up and realize, oh, my house is worth less now. And we're getting some stuff. The problem we have is, is most of that stuff is commercial and it has income on it. So when we go tell them, hey, the market's so much different, we can't give you this amount, we can only give you this amount, they say, well, I don't give a shit. I'm still getting 13000 a month in rent. Nothing's changed. The market hasn't changed. And we say, dude, you're watching TV. We know you are. And they say, well, I still get 13000 in rent. That's right. So that's that's kind of a little bit of trouble. But what, but where it's happened with them is the other folks that were hot and heavy and ready to buy from them, they're starting to back away a little bit now. So our, our spin has to be more, okay, remember all those offers you're getting? How are those looking now? And because they don't have, oh, that other guy's going to give me this. Those guys are starting to back off. Now they're starting to listen to us some. Well, what I, what I always say with, with theirs, like, I agree with you. I agree nothing's changed. That's why it's the time to sell. You know what I mean? Because when something changes in your business, when that 13 goes to 8, you know what happens next. Yeah, I, I think a lot of the opportunity that we've had is where folks are saying, it's just time for me to sell. It doesn't have to do with the market. It's I'm retiring. It's My all, kid yep. doesn't want to do this. That's but, been the bigger message for us. But what about single family? Well, so one of our business lines is pre-foreclosure still. That's still pretty heavy, somewhere between 5 and 10 every single month. And those are still continuing to do really well, but that's they're insulated. It's different. They have a distress level that's not like the regular person. So y'all y'all so never they did gotta sell. Y'all never did broad single family negotiations. Not necessarily like that. It's always I'm losing my house next month. What do yeah. I do? Here's what I can do for you. Yeah. Ours ours yeah. we're we're out there in the in the in the sticks. We're 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 talking to people at all different levels. We're, we we offered somebody one hundred and sixty thousand for a house on the lake. Um June. We offered it in June. Yeah. And they said, no, I got a real estate agent to tell me I can get more. And I'm like, I agree that the real estate agent can get you more. No doubt about that. Yeah. Um, but you don't need an offer. You need a close. Well, they put it on the market and it did. It went under contract a couple of different times. 220, 225. They started out at 250. Okay. Wow. So it went in, it went under contract a couple of different times, 220, 225. And then it needed this repair, needed that repair, needed this. It got worse and worse and worse. You know what I mean? And now they're they've dropped the list price to two twenty five, and it's just we got one on the same lake listed. So we yeah. bought for one forty. We we got it listed for one ninety nine. It hadn't had a showing, not a showing. I mean, so not, two messages. One of them they ain't getting what they totally wanted. The other one is maybe you feel good about not buying that for one sixty because by the time you sell it for one eighty, you wouldn't make any money after fees and carrying costs. That's right. So. They come back to us and like, yeah, that was our offer then. It was. And we told you, but we'll do 130 now. Now, this is before we knew it was even listed. We just said we'll do 130. And the reason why we'll do 130 is because we know that we can put a tenant in there and it'll rock. That, yeah. that A tenant on that lake, that house, two grand a month. Yeah, that's so, my backup plan. So it's going to rock. And, and I also know that there's only a limited number of lake houses on this lake. There's also a limited number of mobile homes allowed on the lake. And so I'm I'm backing uh, into an asset that is irreplaceable. Like that lot will always allow another mobile home to go on that lot. Oh, uh, gotcha. Yeah. So so as this lake becomes million dollar homes, which is what's starting to happen to it, I'm gonna be sitting there like the out like the the, the up house. <laughs> you know what I mean? Yeah. And and so I'm like, I don't care. I gotta I gotta I gotta till I die horizon on lake houses on this particular lake. I will buy every single one that's below 150 for that's the rest that comes available to me forever because I know that as long as the lake's there, this real estate's going to continue to get more valuable. Yep. I missed all the opportunities on my lake at home. You know what I mean? And now it's built up and there's going to be no more opportunities. I mean, you, you you can buy them, but you're going to pay. Yeah. And so anyways, we bought them and uh, we got that one contracted for 130 and then we looked it up and we're like, it's listed for 225 <laughs> and that's when we were like, oh, my gosh. Like, And then we went and looked at, like, hey, we called the real estate agent. What happened on this? You know what I mean? They told us, and we're like, what a, cra what a crazy story. Like, And they're so happy that they're getting 130. Gah. So happy to be away from it. They're so tired of going under contract and then getting told everything that The way I look at your second one is, the best deal I ever did is one I didn't do. Yeah. You look at that one and say, God, that would be one of those deals you sell for basis to get out, and you didn't even think it would be that bad. It didn't. It, yeah. So, But we would rent it out. We don't never – if we can put a tenant in place, yeah, we have no problem 
owning it forever. That's a different strategy. I got so frustrated. We we early on we said let's build this rental house portfolio, mm -hmm. and I just I'm not real big on management. I don't love that, and it got to be where I hated that. So we got rid of all the rentals, and now you can buy a warehouse, seventeen thousand square foot warehouse in Conroe, Texas. We just contracted two days ago. We'll spend a million dollars on it, and it's got fifteen thousand dollars a month in income. Now it's gross income. That's not net, but well, our triple net, ain't it? Well, right now it's gross. Really? That's the way the old man operator ran it. But we're yeah. going to the rent rates the way they are in the area. We can convert that to a net. Yeah. So within the first twelve months, we'll get it fourteen to sixteen thousand in net rents once those leases come due. And now you're in a fifteen cap on a million bucks. And instead of having ten fucking rent houses, I got three businesses. <sighs> Easier life. <laughs> I, I do agree it's easier life, but it's not. But and I, my bank, once I get that thing done, my bank can give me 70% of my money back. It, this is all true, but the person that wants to get into real estate can't go do them. No. I mean, they can, but they can't. You gotta, right. So talking to that audience, a whole different ballgame. The $130,000 yeah. house rents for two grand all day, those were the deals that I was looking for in the beginning. That, that's, it, that's it. I don't, I mean, but the reason why the, the management side doesn't bother me is because we don't do the management. I mean, we, we got a property management company, but I ain't. Yeah, that, that definitely helps for sure then. But you know what I was doing this morning? What? Calling. and make, <laughs> I, leased a, I leased a unit this morning. Brenton, I hope you're fucking watching. <laughs> you know, but you know why I do that? To show, to it find be, out. It can I'm, be done. I, well, no, to show it can be done, but find out what's going on in the marketplace. Mm. To, to see what, what what is the vibe. Yeah. I want to know what the vibe is. And I only get the vibe by getting on the call. Yeah. So so whenever I was negotiating a deal via text this morning, almost I think I might have put the screenshot into Roughneck Real Estate, the group. But I was negotiating a deal via text this morning on our software because I was like, I'm going to go into the office. I'm going to do these four things. And I went in there and I'm negotiating and I got a real estate agent in the middle of a, of a, of a sub two and they're, and it, it's they're freaking out. Cause it's illegal. <laughs> no, 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 no. Oh. They, they, they don't, they won't get out of the way. I'm like, look, I'll take over that mortgage. I'll pay them whatever, take over that mortgage and let them go. Let them bomb us. They just want to move back home with their family. They're trying to move back in with their family. And, yeah. um, anyways, and she's like, no, that's, we're not going to do that. And I was like, well, you've already had it listed for. You know what I mean? 200 days. Like, you're being really oh. unfair. And it's a brand new build. I thought whenever they reached out, I thought it was a builder. I thought it was a builder because the neighborhood doesn't exist. Like, you can't Google oh. Earth. It's it's They bought it in June, and they're fire selling it in November. Golly. So, or in December, I guess. When, might be January by now. But anyways, <laughs> uh, they're fire selling it. You know, they just want payoff on the, on the deal. And the agent... Is, I'm like, look, I'll, I I believe in this area well enough that I will take it sub two. I'll, I'll do it, um, but can't do, you know, can't do it with you. Yeah. <laughs> in the middle of this, being being angry about it. So, uh, what's some other stuff you're seeing? Like like overall, like um, revenue wise, revenue uh, shrinking on the wholesale side, staying the same. Um, other investors, when you talk to them, are they? Still puffing their chest out and acting like the world's on fire, or they? You know, I'm hearing, I'm hearing some honesty. You know, folks don't want to admit it up front, but you get talking long enough, and a couple of weeks, months pass, you're hearing that folks are, folks are struggling. You know, anybody who's dealing in land, I notice is struggling. We've had some land deals last year. We did great buying land from 25 acres to 200 acres in that range within an hour or two from the big MSAs, mm -hmm. and those would sell fast. We would get them for. 50 to gosh towards the end of the year we got up to 75 cents 80 cents on the dollar because we had the confidence in it yeah and the very last piece we bought was in january and i remember thinking eh, let's back off and we bought that one at 80 cents on the dollar i think we paid six no that's not right we paid six hundred fifty thousand for it we we're going to sell it for a million so we thought we we're going to make i don't know 300 range maybe yeah. when it was done we just closed on that and we made fifty thousand. Hey. To me, that's basically a break even because the time I was worried we were going to lose, it ended up selling for seven hundred instead of a million. But so fifty grand's. I mean, fifty grand, fifty grand, but fifty grand on six fifty, that ain't no good. That oh was yeah, no, no. Well, it's it's the it's the old uh, just double your bet at the whatever table. Yeah, at I was, the roulette table, just double your bet. But at the end, you won a million dollars. <throat> but but. Or, or you won $5, but you risked a million to do it. Right. So that, <laughs> like, that's a very similar concept there because we rolled upwards. 
I see the land is definitely taking a hit. Uh, the commercial stuff, we've done really well in the last year and a half, wholesaling, small multifamily. Yep. And the industrial, it seems like the industrial buyers are still a little bit stronger for some reason. We do wholesale some of the industrial stuff, too. I don't really know why, but well, I guess I do know why, the interest rates. But the buyers for the smaller multifamily stuff are starting to back off a little bit, getting more disciplined. I noticed the tertiary markets, we're not able to wholesale them as quickly and easy, even secondary. So we've focused some of our marketing efforts into the back in the middle of the MSAs again yeah. because we just think there's still more confidence with the buyers on those there at is. the tight margins. But also, um, I mean, I think you know, I think overall, um, you know, there's a lot of pain in the marketplace right now because inventory is still an issue for a lot of people. But buyers, um, I mean, the buyers have just evaporated, and, and that's what creates the tightness. I feel like it, it just you know, it's like it, it's so it's so difficult right now when you're dealing with a buyer um i mean they have all the all the leverage in the deal people aren't used to that they're not used to getting bullied around by a buyer um you know that's actually a, worth talking about on our single family a lot of the pre-foreclosure stuff is single family and it's lower price point less than 250 so in, in yeah. the bear county area so those still vanish I mean, even still getting people that want to buy those to flip them because they can deliver it to the market mm-hmm. for 250 275 and still do fine. So we don't have any problem moving those. That's probably the fastest moving asset that we've got these days. Yep. But every once in a while, in the last three years, when come, people come to me with these negotiating strategies and laugh, or strategies and tactics, I laugh. I'm like, forget it. Someone else will come buy it. You don't have to. Yeah. Well, this is a problem. Great. It's not a problem for the next guy. And I love that. And it's easy. Yeah. And my wife's our agent, so she deals with the stuff that hits the market. Mm-hmm. And I'm having to put my pride aside because folks will come back and while those assets will still sell, I can't just tell them get lost because I need to make it work with that buyer because the other buyer might not show up for several weeks and it's not worth me waiting. So I'm having to put my pride and ego aside when they give me some shit. I got to say, let me be realistic about it and just say get instead of saying get lost. Well, I had one that was showing a lot. It was showing a bunch in this market. Mm -hmm. It was showing a bunch. And it was just showing, 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 showing. It's like, man, Ugh. we're getting a lot of showings. We well, got a cash offer come in. I think we had listed for one nineteen, um, paid sixty for it. Got listed Take for one nineteen. Cash offer comes in one oh five. Take it. I took it. Yes. Get out That's there. a good move. Well, yeah. Some it, of our guys are fight with me. Well, let's try to counter no, on no, this no, term. No, That's no, right. We didn't, we didn't that. Count. We take didn't. the offer as is. But they got an option period. I don't care. Why don't to close? Yeah. That's it. So we we took it. And uh, it's not that you're not going to make the other thirty; it's that you're still going to make fifty on the front side. Yeah, we were we were happy. We were happy. And he went out and did his inspection. He come back to be a bully. Wants ninety five. He wanted ninety five. He, he wanted to take it. Yeah, and and I and I was like, man, we're getting a lot of showings. Let's negotiate up to hundred. No, Fuck it, take no, it. no. I was I'm not I'm not that I'm not that. But I was I had a lot of confidence mm-hmm. at that moment because I was getting a lot of showings. Uh oh. So I was feeling cocky. I was, feeling, I was feeling good about it. You know what I mean? I said no problem. We love ninety five. We love ninety five. But close Friday. There you go. Get something back. Yeah. Like, look, you, you're you you're proving you're not a buyer right now by, by renegotiating. You know what I mean? This this deal's been a deal. It's a deal at 120. You already got a discount. You come back for another discount. I don't have a problem giving you another discount, but I want you to close Friday. Well, he vomitosed. What? Yeah, now it's been like, you know, a month and... Oh, it's so I like, showing, I like the fact that you're getting getting them to push back on the price and maybe or time maybe can get you close sooner. But we've had several of them. That big ranch I was talking yeah. about, they wanted a long option. They want to inspect the well. They want to do all this stuff no one would do in the past. And my partner came in my office and was telling me about that. And I was like, give it to him. Well, why no, don't we negotiate no, no, them on days? I'm like, give no, them what they fucking want because I want this want. to sell. Yep. I had that conversation with Spoon this morning. Spoon's like, like these guys want a water well. I'm like, water well is 30 grand. You bought it for 320 you're selling it for six seventy. Give them a well. You might want to give them a well. You know what right. I mean? You might want to figure the, figure the well out. Like you right. know. And he's like, no, no, no. I'm, I'm like, trust me, Spoon. <laughs> Just trust me. Like you, you know, even if they even if they come back and renegotiate price down. So that goes back to something I was bringing up earlier. I feel like I mentioned it to you, but you said this really isn't quite my message. My message to a lot of the guys. I got some guys in a coaching program, and my partners. My message has been, guys, look, if we don't make any profit this next year, we keep all of our people employed, we cover any mm-hmm. of our debt, we keep things going, and we're not. I'm not trying to grow the balance sheet for the next 12 months. That ain't my goal. My goal is to keep everybody happy and don't spend the capital we've taken 10 years to build and grow. Don't burn that. Don't have any losses. Let's just coast. Everybody take a fucking breather. Chill out. We've killed it for 10 years, everybody. Pat yourself on the back. Take a little vacation. Work part-time weeks. Let's relax and make our business better and tight and clean. And let's just watch. 
I'm well. I'm in the same. I'm in the same kind of. When it comes to growing, though, it's like uh, growth is easy because it, it's it's just an action game. Like for us, I'll give you an example. We bought a duplex for twenty five hundred bucks. Did you ever think you wouldn't be able to sell a duplex? In any condition, anywhere in the, in the state last of Texas. ten years, I never thought I couldn't sell anything. <laughs> so, so we bought a duplex for twenty five hundred bucks. It's cheap, and, and somebody wants to live there, right? I was like, it, you know, regardless of what's going on with this, does it have a roof? Yeah, okay. I was like, I was like, it, somebody's going to want to tackle this behemoth. <gasps> oh shit! We got a ten thousand, twenty thousand dollar house out there in Iran County. Yeah, and we can't sell the motherfucker. All right, so 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 we we kind of cussed as much on this channel. Yeah, oh yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. So (laughs) anyway, so we wanted to uh, we we wanted to get uh, Wade said thanks for getting back to his uh, yesterday, Logan. He's got the part contracted. You got it, Wade. Good job. So we got it going. It's on the market finally. For how much? (laughs) Fourteen. You know what I mean? It's like we paid cash for it. We forget we own it 90% of the time. It's yeah. just on a whiteboard somewhere. And every now and then I walk by the whiteboard. And I'm like, hey, hold on. <laughs> yeah. So so we got we got a new intern, um, Brenton, and he just he does leasing. He does he don't know come here from Sikkim. So we just yeah. put him in bad situations all day where he's on the phone. <laughs> he don't know what he's talking about. He don't know what a duplex is. He don't know anything. Mm-hmm. But we got a investor lift. Oh, okay. And yeah. so we're like, go into this town on God mode and call everybody. Mm-hmm. Just call everybody. And let him know. So he's doing this the day after Thanksgiving, mind you. I didn't know they were going to be in the office. I walked in the office. They were there. I was Good like, for them. It's like, why are y'all here? They're like, oh, mm. didn't. I'm like, all right, well. Because I'm sick of my family. <laughs> well, kind of, I guess. But anyway, so it put him on there. Well, he beat the bushes enough in Investor Lift, and it's listed on MLS, that people started reaching out to the listing. Huh. So he's calling, and he don't know what he's he, – well, I'm like, look, and this is what I told him. I said, look. If you sell it for five grand, whatever you sell it for, I don't care what you sell it for, whatever you sell it for, you get all the proceeds. Oh, yeah. Get on my balance sheet, I, I, I'll pay you. Yeah. The, whatever you sell it for, you get the balance. You know, so just stay with it. Like whatever you sell it for, that's your Christmas bonus. Whatever. If you end up only being able to sell it for a dollar, then you only get a dollar. Yeah. You know what I mean? But just get it sold. You get, you get every bit of the proceeds that we have in that deal. And so, anyways, he beat the bushes, beat the bushes, beat the bushes. And he does it. Like I'm like, anytime you got downtime, you know, keep your notes. Whoever's warm or going to go yesterday or tomorrow or the Thursday, just follow him up. And he's in Cardone U, so he's, you know, good at following. Learn how to sell. So, anyways, he, he, but like we're getting two offers on it now. And one dude flew in from out of state. What? I was like, I, so it's an action, it's an action game still, you know, but we've never <clears> had to take, put that much work into selling a $2,500 duplex. You know, it's funny you say that. In our wholesaling business, we had, Six people in acquisition, two in dispo. Flip you know what it's flip? We pushed all those people to dispo. We yep. got two in acquisition. Yep. And the two in acquisition got it easy. They do got it easy because people are coming to them. They get to negotiate. They, they That's got- a good point. We are working much harder to sell stuff in all areas. So so in the phone call, this is this is just common human nature. Right now, your phone, what's your preferred method of communication? Meaning you communicate 90% of the time where? Text. Text. On I, Facebook Messenger. Yeah, yeah. And we have each other's numbers. Yeah. We could we could open up our phone. And we don't. We text in Facebook Messenger. Good point. Yeah. You know, so that's where we communicate. We get emails. You know what I mean? If you emailed me and it was something important, you couldn't make me think it's important enough because we don't communicate enough on email. You know what I mean? Yeah. And when I open it up, something that is important is going to catch my eye, and I'm going to dive into that. Yeah. I'll get back to your email in the morning whenever I'm going through my old emails. You know, So people are like that. What's the least common way that people communicate now? Phone. Phone. So that's where we do. We're calling. Yeah. Because when you call, like so right now we call, we, we triple dial every single human. So if I call you once and you don't answer, I hang up give it a beat call you twice. And then on the third call, the third call, I leave a voicemail. Okay. I know you're not going to check the voicemail. So then I send you a text message, but I don't text you. Hey, this is Corey. I take a video and send you a video. Oh yeah. Hey yeah. Logan, this is Corey trying to reach out to you about your property over here on such and such, or I got a property you might be interested in. Give me a call back. Boom. And I send it. Why spam don't send videos with your name in it oh that's kind of cool you know so I, i'll show you this this is for the people okay whip this baby out so brenton's doing that yesterday 
And uh, and and I don't think Ryan wants me to tell a story, but I'm gonna tell a story anyways because <laughs> it's fucking funny. So um, we're doing the we're doing it yesterday. We're doing leasing training. So I've got all of the people in property management doing lease training. So I'm showing them how to follow up, showing them how to do everything. And I get to the selfie video. Nobody wants to do the selfie video. Uh-huh. And I'm like, this is to lease a place. This isn't to buy a place. This isn't to sell a place. It's just to get a tenant in place. Nobody's ever had to work this hard to get a tenant. It's an action game. So we're going to put more action on the street. Well, we get to um, when we're doing remote showings, people got to send us a selfie and their ID. And yeah. so we, this girl went, was, went to a showing. She sent us a selfie. And uh, her name's Caitlin. And that's Brenton's ex-girlfriend's name. Uh-huh. And she's a heavy set girl. And Britain's ex-girlfriend was a heavy set girl too. So I'm like, this is in your wheelhouse. <laughs> a bigger Caitlin, you should be able to do it. So so you know send her a video. Send her a video. Get get your angles right. You want to look cute. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. You don't want to mess up the second sell opportunity. Do some push-ups first. So so this is the video he sends. <laughs> now you don't see what he's saying, but look at that video. <laughs> Is that not just <laughs> terrible? Yeah, I was going to say, it looks like he's like on a crime program or something. <laughs> it's so bad. So bad. So, so he says, That looks like an evidence exhibit. This is what the perpetrator said. <laughs> he, so he sends a video. So she responds. She responds yesterday. I'm going to read you the response. There's three text messages here. Never do this again, sir. <laughs> I wish. It's even better. The story is going to get so good before it gets over. So I'm not getting the apartment anymore, but if you're single, we can still talk. (laughs) Googly eye emojis. He doesn't reply. Hmm. Have you seen a picture of me? I can send one. (laughs) Hide eyes uh, monkey emoji. Just as a forewarning, I'm a thick alt bitch, but like in the best ways. (laughs) LOL. What does alt mean? Uh, Well, I think it's the purple hair. Alternative. It's like. Oh. So, so. so. She sends him this. Well, he, does, he doesn't tell me this yesterday, right? So today, I'm so you're in, like, what's up with that lead? Is she going to lease? No, no, no. Well, today we, we're going, like, I'm in there in the office, and I'm doing leasing, and I'm doing mm-hmm. this. But I'm, I'm like, real loud. I'm in my office there in their offices. Mm-hmm. But I'm I'm on the phone, and I'm like, did you hear that shit, Britton? Did you hear what Dad just did? I don't hear you making no calls. And then, you know what I mean? I'm back on the phone. So I'm in there, and I'm talking shit. And he goes, that lady texted me back because I was sending selfie videos. And uh, he's like, that lady texted me back yesterday. Uh, she wants to go on a date. And I'm like, wait, what? What? Whoa, whoa, whoa. And he's like, yeah. And he read it. And he goes, and then she added me on Snapchat. And she said she's <laughs> in a poly relationship. And that her boyfriend has approved of him. Oh. And I'm like, Britton, I have so many questions. Like, in the poly relationship, in the approval, like, does that mean he's going to be, like, on the date, too? Like, like if y'all are sitting on the couch, are you sitting in the middle, and you got one of them sitting on each side of you? Like, how does this go? You gotta, you gotta do the market research. Or does he got a long leash? Let's her go. Maybe I don't know. But anyways, th- so the selfie videos. But the selfie videos, <laughs> I will tell you this: if anybody is not using the selfie videos, they get attention. I bet, dude. They reply. They know as soon as they know you're a human. We just got a spike in viewership for that, Corey. So <laughs> it's good. It's good. That's that's interesting point. <laughs> uh, the selfie videos do work. I mean, we we use them religiously. Yeah. Um, we are you in card on you? We have it for our sales guys. Yeah, yeah. I've watched a lot of it, dude. It, the selfie video. It, it's yeah. one of the first when I when I watched that I was like, I was like, well, you know what? I, I, I I've done it on Snapchat a bunch. I was like, I'll start doing it, and and we've had when our sales girls do it, they've got to like. Look, just so, so they, they use a filter. You know filter? what this makes me think of? When I first started doing real estate deals by myself, I remember thinking, I will do anything to get me to get people to sell me these properties. And when it was time to sell them, I said, I will do anything to get people to buy these properties. And I'd get a realtor listed on LMLS, and I would personally call all the people in the area. I'd be sending them freaking emails and texts, and my realtor's like, dude, that's my job. And I'm like, who cares? Whatever, it's my job too. So we've had some conversation over the last few months in our office about the kind of work we're having to do now. And I would say we're putting in multiples of the same labor hour to get the same effect now. And it's taking a lot more work. But the folks that are willing to put in that work, they're going to be the guys. I remember talking to some guys say, don't worry, you're going to be fine. You're bright, you're hardworking, you're not going to let yourself fall apart. You might have some shitty months, but you ain't missing no meals. That's right. You're that personality, you won't go hungry. And they're looking at me saying, are you sure? And I said, yes, I promise. I know how this works now. I feel good about this. You're going to be fine. So – as a non-real estate agent, are you a real estate agent? 
yeah, you're not on real estate agent too, but you got a wife that's a real estate agent. Right. I don't know if you'd get in trouble for this, but I, I, I got our agent in trouble. Uh oh, what happened? So I set up, you, you know what live com is. I mean, it's Mitch Stevens' little yeah. business. So I set him up a live com number to where it would call that number, but it'd ring his phone. Uh huh. Okay. And then I pulled the entire agent database in Waco. And there was 1,800 agents at the time, and all their phone numbers. You did some lead gen for them? And so I, I recorded a voicemail that said, hey, I heard you had a client that's looking for a property in Azle School District. If you could, give me a call back. And I dropped that voicemail to all 1,800. <laughs> His phone exploded. He, and I didn't tell him. So I didn't uh, tell him that's what that's what I was doing. So he's just oh sitting gosh. somewhere, and all of a sudden his phone rings. He got 435 calls. That's incredible return. Well, it was a hot market, but Dang. I was like, I, he's like, I would call him. I'd be like, "Is our property showing?" He'd be like, "No, it's not showing. It hadn't got any showings." So Let me like, fix this. And I was like, "Oh, okay." Well, I was like, "It's a good looking property. I'll fit. I'll, I'll doll this thing. I mean, it's a good school district. It's yeah. a great property. Like, what? <laughs> people just don't know it's there. I'll, I'll let great. them know it's there. I'll fix that. It sold." It sold off of that RVM, there but he could, he couldn't take the volume of calls. He, he's like, man, and then he he knew, like he knew I was something went down. Yeah, he was like, don't ever do that again. Like you're gonna get me in trouble. We can't <laughs> use uh, whatever recorded messages. We can't do this. Uh, he's like, you're gonna you put my license at risk. And I'm like, by the way, well, you're welcome for that commission. <laughs> well, I was just, I, at the time I was like, well, what's that got to do with you? It was me. You didn't do nothing. You know what yeah, I mean? Yeah, like you were yeah. you were just my agent on the deal. You like, throw me under the bus any day. Yeah, like just tell him tell him you don't know what happened. The owner did it. Like and he, you didn't know what was happening. I didn't I, I didn't God. give you a heads up. We put a whole that makes me think we just put a wholesale deal in Houston on MLS not long ago. And the broker or the realtor on the other side that is the buyer realtor started giving us a bunch of shit saying they're calling track and all this kind of stuff. <laughs> And I remember everyone in the office freaking out, and I started laughing. They're like, why are you laughing? I'm like, we're not realtors. They're going to call Trek. I'm like, I know. Are they going to make you lose your license? Yeah. Well, no, it's Trek. I'm like, what's Trek going to do to you? Yeah. Oh. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> dude, uh, people, I mean, anyways, yeah. I, I've done that. Now, the emails are a little bit harder to get, but if you got the emails, I know people that like. Oh, they blast. Well, the email blast. Uh, yeah. We'll blast in the area, so we'll scrape for sales that happen mm -hmm. in the area, those realtors and stuff like that. But with us tightening up our markets and the type of asset we're doing, we're actually starting to build the relationships in the area with brokers that deal with that type of stuff. Strangely enough, that's a sale. A lot of the, our dispo stuff is starting to happen through brokers. I'd say about half of that's working through Investor Lift. About the other half is working through a network of brokers we built the relationship with. I don't understand. I've asked several brokers, call them. I'm like, hey, yeah. Uh, and, and these are people I know, and I'm like, "You're you got how many agents you got now? I got ten agents. How many buyers are they working with? Oh, I don't know. Like, how do you not know that? You know what I mean? Like, uh, like they, you have an agreement to show them houses. You know what I mean? Like, this is the most crucial part of today's market. You are a real estate broker. That goes into the whole eighty percent of humans are just not really good at what they do and I, don't I'm, really care. I'm like, I'd be having a fucking weekly meeting and 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 crafting. So that's the exact reason why I was telling our guys, you're the kind of guy that's not going to go out of business. You're the kind of guys can do just fine in all yeah. this because of that right there. It's like I'm I'm just like, dude, you've got to know. Like, if I was a broker and I had 200 agents working for me, I would know. Send me a report. Let's have a meeting. I'd like to know to make sure you're doing what you're supposed to do. Well, how many buyers are you working with? And guess what? Here's how many listings we have in office. Yeah. You let's know what see I mean? What we can do. Like, this is an ecosystem. Let's let's see if we can't show these properties first. You know what I mean? Let's let's yeah. get everybody eaten. I noticed the commercial brokerages do really well at that. They and do. also, there's a company called Austin Realty in Austin. They're one of the bigger brokerages for residential. They do really good at that. The big boys got to figure it out. They do. I mean, it, it's it's an ecosystem, and you want to you want to do it in a manner that everybody on your team's eating. So, um, yep. anyways, I, I I I did learn that from you, by the way, and that's something that we do. I'm calling the people that have sold stuff in the neighborhood. Yeah. But now we're calling people that have stuff listed. So if they have something similar listed, uh, okay. we call them and we're like, hey, how many showings have you had? Uh, I've had t 10. Great. Man, the crazy part is that's what we have to do nowadays because you can't just blast to a lot of people and a sale happens. And that's a lot more work. So people are earning a lot fewer dollar per hour, but that's what you have to do. That's just what you have you to do. you want a sale, dude, that's what you got to do. I call them like, "Who? what are the agents that have shown your property? I'm going to send you the agents that have shown mine. You send me the agents that have shown yours. And then you got to go reach out to all those agents. You know what I mean? And say, hey, look, is your buyer still in the marketplace? 
you, would you show them my property? I'm offering a 5% commission on the buy, on the buyer side. You know, speaking of that type of tactical work, I remember talking to a, bro, a broker that had some stuff listed for us. It was not my wife. It was somebody else in a different area. We've got all these showings. we got this. we got that. Here's our feedback. And I said, okay, well, what did the follow-up call sound like when you called the agent? I didn't follow up. Well, this is, what the, this is the feedback they sent us. And I'm yeah, like, no, no. I would always, when it was my listings early on, I would always call the person that went to walk it, the agent, and say, how did they like the house? Oh, they liked it. It was nice. Are they going to make an offer? No. Then what is it that they didn't like about the house? I would, I and would, then I also ask, at what price does this make sense? Well, they weren't really interested. I said, okay, hold on. Stop, stop, stop. At 400000 it's listed for. They don't have interest. But at $10, I bet they buy this house. Is that right? Yeah, they'd buy it for $10. Okay, great. Well, there's another number in there that ain't 10 bucks, but it ain't 400 What's that look like? Well, I don't really know. I would like you to call your client and ask. And the strange thing is, if you have four or five of them call and ask, you start to find a number that's actually in a pretty close range. It might be 390 Right. So the market's speaking. So now I know either I know they lower the price or I need to tell that person I'll give it to you for three ninety, dude. It's, but it's, that's the work. So we're doing we're doing the exact opposite now. After <laughs> a showing's happening at nine o'clock, nine o'clock in the morning at nine thirty, boom, call them. No, they have our offer with concessions. Oh, you're saying we're willing to take this? We we give mm. them concessions on our offer. We email it to them. Now we can't don't know their buyer's name or anything, so it's just a contract that they have to fill out the other half of and say these huh. are the concessions we're willing to give. On the hope that they play the game with us and counter. That's interesting. So when you're you're countering yourself because you already have it listening, but just enough to get the engagement. And say we're serious. Come play yeah, ball. Let's see where the shakes. We don't, e- we don't even ask for their feedback. We send them a counter offer with concessions. We're buying down points. We're we're putting a kitchen in. We're doing whatever little knickknack stuff to where it's like because you know the woman's on the other side of that. She's going wait what? I, I get, get new their- cabinets. Ooh, let's yeah. talk to them. We. Let's quit looking. Let's start so negotiating. That goes back to what you just said earlier. It's an action game. It's an action game. If I get out there and get in the trenches, something's going to happen. It's going to happen. You can't tell me if you do this every single day, something ain't going to happen. Now, on the flip side of that, we got a dude that's sitting there calling people, rattling the, the bushes. We got agents answering the phone, taking offers, making counter offers on our behalf. We've got we've got a, a network of people that are working really hard to do this, but then. Yeah. You know, it, it, at the end of the day, it comes back to the product. You know what I mean? Like, it's always going to come back to what you're buying, what you're selling, what's going on there. But if you get enough eyeballs on it, if you can get enough people to look at it, then it is, it's going to come through. We got a cash offer this morning on a property we were trying to rent through our rental software. Uh. So they, Hispanic family saw the sign and didn't realize it was for rent, called the number, wanted to buy the person that saw that text message that said no we want to buy put it into our team's software our little global communication on the listing for the agent Mm -hmm. the agent sees it on teams calls them says hey have you gone by and looked at it and they're like yeah we'll pay ninety five thousand cash cost basis on it's 46 make you some money and we're like we'll take it we were going to rent it for 1500 a month but i'm like today's market that's a sell yeah i'll take that money right there i agree with that who we got here I was just try- trying to find something relevant, and this this was interesting. We so. got a child, right? That's <laughs> whoa, also whoa, why whoa. it's interesting. Hey, good to hear. I wanted to make some time this week to follow back up with you regarding that property on LaSalle Street. Just seeing where you're currently standing with that property. You want something that is cheap so you can sell uh, the estate and make money, right? We are investors. We're looking to, you know, buy property at the moment so we can put some money into it and either keep it in our rental portfolio or, you know, sell it back off on the market. Yeah, I'm looking for 100,000. You're looking for 100,000? Yeah. Hmm. No wiggle room. You're pretty firm at that number. I mean, if we were to get this wrapped up and close in the next two weeks, cover the closing costs, you don't this have any wiggle room to work people. with us? Uh, yeah, if your offer is good. Okay, I got you. I mean, I always like to ask people, just out of curiosity, what what has you thinking about selling the property? Yeah, I'm I wouldn't tired have done of that. holding on to it because I have ten hundred. Right off the bat, when she said a hundred grand, I would have pulled the Mitch Steve. Just, Why so much? Yeah, let him justify. I'm tired of going to court up and down, so that's why I wanted to get rid of it. Mm, okay, yeah, we can definitely help take care of that. Um, and get this off of your hands. 
Is there any reason why you why you want to really sell for for a hundred? Because just looking at the assessment from last year, I mean, the property was assessed for sixty five thousand. So I can't I can't seem to imagine where you're getting a hundred thousand from. Um, unless, I see your you know, number. You did a total I'm right now. Within the past year. <laughs> you didn't show me the number. Uh, what'd you end up doing to the property? You put in new kitchen and all that good stuff. Oh no, we just uh, paint it and make it look nice so we can rent it out. And I have people living there right now. Mm, okay. How, how have the tenants been treating you? Is that somebody that... Hey, he's he's, he's, he's looking. He's digging. They, they pretty, pretty easy going. <laughs> he's trying to find the motivation. I yeah. I would have made my offer. So far, you know, the government's been helping her, but... The know. offer, the, the counter will tell you the motivation. Yeah, that sounds pretty typical. Well, I mean, hey, like I said, the property was assessed last year for 65000 I mean, would you even consider anything in that realm? I have to talk to my fiance and see what he does. Yeah, I can't okay. right If your okay. fiance was here, what do you think he would want? Me. So you guys are willing to have you ever talked to him before about it? What did he say yeah. then? I mean, yeah. I think that's definitely a reasonable ballpark that we'd be willing to work with. We definitely want to still, you know, get some eyes on the property and nail that number down for you. But, you know, again, you know, we'd be able to get this wrapped up and taken care of within the next so, know, two to three weeks. Is this a three minute long TikTok? How long is this TikTok? Do you know? Yep. Yeah. What, what's your name again? Oh, he cut, he cut a lot out. Oh, okay. I'll talk to my now, he is, he is doing more awesome. than most people. Set a date this Friday to get back on the phone with each other to reconnect. How does, how does that sound? I would okay, never have done fine. that. Hey, Valerie, get, this is Cameron. All right, stop it right there. First thing yeah, in that case, I would have probably said, you know what? What do you think your husband would say, your fiance would say? What do you say the last time? Have you ever talked to me about this before? Get through that so you can probably say, okay. Let's go ahead and do it anyway. I, if he yeah. says no, let's do it anyway. Let's do it anyways. I'll tell you what. I'm going to send you a contract right now. Do you see it in your inbox? No. Okay, hold on. Let me check. You know, someone's yeah, typing send, it send up. Send a contract. Let's open this thing up and look through it. Because if they're on the phone and they're that, they're motivated. They're it's obvious. What Logan just said, most people never do. One, he didn't. He made an offer, but he didn't present an offer. Right. Yeah. He talked about an he offer. Talked, he hadn't made one. What's your email? Let me put something in front of you. We can go over it together. Yeah. Once they're once you're going over the well, offer the, with them, the way our offers are set up is they're basically a template with a few exceptions, so that we can literally get that thing out while we're on the phone. Dude, we every single time we would have a, a four minute or less phone call, <clears throat> and, and an offer would be in their email if they give us an email. Another thing, sometimes we'll do. He might feel like he's pressured with the time. I just say, hey, hang tight. Let me go talk to my underwriter. Hold on. Let me see if I can get this out for you right now. And if they're not teed up or they're not around, and we'll walk over there and say, hey, Shannon, get this offer together right now. And when they get back, I can tell them, do you have access to your email? Can you look yep. at it? Because it only takes two or three minutes to fill one out that's almost templated already. Oh, yeah. No, that's it. I mean, we have a we have a DocuSign template. <laughs> and it, sometimes we run people that are sold, they just don't have email. Oh, yeah. So you know what we do? What's that? Snail mail them a contract. Okay. What, what we do is we'll call a mobile notary that's in the area and say, can you get over there today? Really? Well, I don't have to notarize anything. No. I'm paying you to get your ass over there to drive. But I'll pay you the same fee. And they'll go over there with the mobile, the mobile notary will go over there. We're gonna do that, Braxton. Yeah. Take that down. There you so, go, Braxton. What, what we've been we've been sending them. Uh, I didn't even. I never thought about the mobile notary, but some of them might be hard to find in like Iran, Texas, wherever that is. <laughs> yeah. But it depends. I mean, the cool part is you can usually mobile notary is used to getting contracts and documents signed. Mm -hmm. They're used to driving places, and they're pretty dang good at answering their phone. So for 150 bucks, pretty much anywhere in the United States, yep. you can deploy a human. Dude, that that is that's an amazing. We're used to doing it with deeds, so for a contract, it's just one step uh, yeah. earlier. Well, we, I mean, dude, we we've been sending them snail mail, and they've been getting them mailed back to us. That's how we got the Dang. one in jail. <laughs> you know, it's like like when they don't have an email, we just all right, well, we'll put it in the mail. We lick a envelope, let it go, drop it yeah. in there, and let it go, and then it gets mailed back to us. And it's always so funny because they'll they'll mail it back, and they'll they'll take a contract and parts of it that don't apply to it you yeah. know like the tide waters and stuff they're just throwing yeah. x's and red and circling and initialing it's and like, the hard part is like man i don't have time to, i can't be countering this i'm just gonna sign it and send it yeah we're just gonna sign it and send it they're like no it's gonna be to me like like sixty five thousand. they'll write out next to it to me <laughs> in my pocket <laughs> yeah like it's like okay we got this we we can work with this uh, you know <laughs> if we end up in court with this contract uh it'll be some issues but hopefully we don't end up in court but anyways yeah. <laughs> Logan, it's been fun. Uh, people, thanks for showing up. Uh, you know, I, I have a good time. You're, you're here tonight. 
Uh, you're going to be on the Jess Marshall podcast after this? Yeah, that's right. We have that afterwards, and we're going to do a group here. Um, we'll stick around, chop it up. There's several folks I know that are coming. Dude, there's a bunch of people coming, a bunch of people that have reached out, so it's going to be a fun time. Um, need to come out. Need to hang out with uh, Logan if you're in the Dallas area. Yeah, it'll be fun. Come out. Fun. I think it's uh, $25 an open bar, so it's you know oh, basically the price of five drinks. Um, you can be here drinking. I'm actually getting a bottle of uh, some sort of weird vodka sent to me. Because I had a TikTok go viral about some weird vodka. Oh, and they sent you one? And they're going to send it to me. Huh. And I'm going to, I don't drink. What video are you taking shots of it? I don't drink, but I told Wait them. Wait a second. Did I know that? How what? long have you not drank? I, I've never really drank. I mean, I, didn't know I drank that. when I was in the oil field, but I, I mean, I'm not like a recovering alcoholic, which is why I'm going to do, because they're going to send me a bottle of vodka. Yeah. I'm going to get a hotel room over here. All right. And I'm going to sit here mm-hmm. with Braxton and whoever else will come in. They're not going to drink. They're going to stay sober. And I'm. we're going to make it a drinking game on cold calling. Oh, man. So we're going to have a cold calling drinking game, and I'm just going to end up hammered. Yeah. And they're going to be sober, and we're going to see who does better by the end of the day. <laughs> you know what I mean? That's good. And and some of the other games we play when cold calling is we say, you got to say a word in the, in, the, oh. in the deal and still close the deal. So the day <laughs> we do that, we'll be live at a table like this, probably this very one. If I can make call. a suggestion, they have to do what we used to do in college in the in the lecture hall. They have to say, <coughs> penis. <laughs> That's it. Just <laughs> How many times can you on. slide that in your phone call? <laughs> it, how many, what's the most number of times you can say penis on a phone call and still get a Without contract? Without getting caught and get a deal. <laughs> <laughs> so anyways, it's going to be a fun time. So like, subscribe. Logan, yeah, yeah. thanks for being here. No doubt. Uh, we'll, we'll chop it up later. If you like what you've seen here, find Braxton on Tinder and subscribe to my YouTube channel. Just keep swiping. He's on there.